From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impe Presents. Once again, as always, we're so delighted that we can come and share some things with you that are absolutely startling from headlines around the world. This first one, though, really moves my heart. ISIS to U.S. We are now in your state and cities. That's startling, isn't it? ISIS. Once again, jihadist leader to U.S., Islam is coming. And then Iran's Revolutionary Guard committed to death to America. Oh, my, oh, my. I can't believe how far we've come with all the threats that we've had to our wonderful country, can you? And now, let's go on to this next headline, if you will, please. The world needs a clarion. Jack, I'm going to stop again. What is a, a clarion? What does that mean? Rexella, Webster's Dictionary said it is a medieval horn similar to a trumpet. It has a very shrill, piercing sound, but it's a call to action. Let's do something. Anti-Semitism is filling the European Union. The Nazi party has again arisen in Nazi Germany where they killed six million Jews before. Right now, there are 10 million Muslims in France and all the persecution is against the Jewish people. A million Jews are about to depart from France to go back to their homeland. And that's the Bible, friend. Anti-Semitism is gonna rule the world at the time of Christ's return. God's going to come and spare his people, the Jew. Oh, I feel sorry for the Jewish people. You know, the only place where they can find peace and love is where they are right now because they are democracy. And Christians aren't dying there. They're dying in all the Muslim nations. And that's 57 of them. They can't kill enough Jews. And it's going to get far worse in the days ahead. Why? Because... Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever will be again. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the Jews' sake, the elect, they shall be shortened. Say, how do I know the Jews are God's elect? Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. And I am upset because these Muslim nations, 57 of them, have billions and billions of acres. Yes. And they want that little piece of land from the Jew, which is just 200 miles long. Right. God forgive them. Mm, I'll say amen to that, Jack. Now he's been talking about God's love for the Jew. Let, let's address, uh, if you will, Jack, the Holocaust against Christians right now, too. Oh, Rexella, half a million slaughtered in Iraq, every church gone but one. The thousands slaughtered in Syria were Jews as well. And then, of course, in Egypt, the Coptic Christians, as I already said, there's just no end to it. Why? First of all, because Islam hates Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 9, you shall be hated all nations for my name's sake. And USA Today just covered the article stating that 132 nations hate Christianity more than any other religion. Wow. Jesus said in John 16, too, the time will come that whosoever kills you will think he's doing God a service. Boy, that sounds like Islam today against the Christians, the Chaldeans and the Coptics and the Catholic Christians of these countries overseas. And then again, 
Jesus said in John 15, verses 18 to 20, If the world hate you, it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The servant is not greater than his Lord me. If they've persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. This is Bible prophecy. Revelation 6, 9, I saw under the altar the souls of them were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And then you know Islam kills with the sword. And we go over to Revelation 20, verse 4, I saw the souls that were beheaded Ooh. for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Oh, friends, it's here. It's coming. And we're going to see more and more. Do you know that the world Christian encyclopedia says 45 million Christians have been slaughtered mm. in the 20th century by the same crowd? Do you know that I have 200 headlines I lifted up here a month ago where they're killing the Christians in all these different places? Friends, we are really in trouble. Why? Because Jesus is about to return. They hated Jesus. They hate the cross even more. Oh, I wish I could quote the service for you on that right now. Just believe what I'm saying. I see, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it's the power of God unto salvation. First Corinthians 1.18. They don't like to hear that, all right? And there's a time coming when Galatians 6.12 says they're going to be persecuted because of the offense of the cross. But praise God, there are men like me who follow the Apostle Paul who could say in Galatians 6.14, God forbid that I should glory in anything else but the cross of Jesus Christ. And I'm glad because when he comes back, he's going to rule this world. And Philippians 2.10 says, when he comes, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. And it's not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Allah, it's Jesus Amen, my Jesus. Amen. You know, Jack, I was sitting here thinking about all the Christians that have been martyred. There are only five crowns that we can receive in heaven. When we go to heaven, the, Lord, the Lord's going to reward those who have given their lives. One of the crowns is a soul winner's crown. You're going to get that one for sure, Jack, winning souls. Another crown is the martyr's crown. All of these people who have been martyred, are going to receive that crown. You know what they're going to do with it? They're going to lay it at Jesus' feet. How wonderful. Oh, my. But pray for them. Pray. Let me show where that is yeah. in the Bible. Oh, do, please. Right on, Rexella. Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life, God says in Revelation 2.10. And then in chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, we lay those crowns at the feet of Jesus, saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to receive glory, honor, and praise. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Here is my love for you as we lay the crown at his feet. I'm going to go on here, friends. Terrorism has evolved greatly. And I think we'll all admit that since 9-11. New Age of Terror is a metastasizing or growing worldwide. ISIS won't stay in the Middle East. ISIS to U.S., we are in your state in cities. Whoa, can't believe it. And here's a video. We will fly the Islamic flag over the White House. And then, Jack, would you like to read this? This is by Senator Lindsey Graham. Oh, it's so powerful. The head of the FBI, the director of national intelligence, the director of homeland security, the attorney general have all said that the safe haven in Syria now Iraq, owned by ISIS, is a direct threat to the homeland. Hundreds of Americans and thousands of European jihadists are there on the ground. I fear that they are going to come back using American passports or European passports, accept the training, and come back and hit us. And they're talking about them training right now for suicide bombing. God help America. Oh, Jack, that's so very, very serious. And oh, again, let me just emphasize, all of this points to something good. Can you believe it? It points to something good. It points to the return of the Lord because Jesus said when you see terror, when you see these things happen, and you might be even saying, oh, we've always had terror, but we've not always had it at this proportion. 
so many things are all coming together, so many things that Jesus said would happen prior to his coming. We need to be ready. I trust that you will be ready. We're going to give the invitation. Talk about that in just a moment. But first, we're going to go on now. Oh, I can't believe this one. A representative of Al-Qaeda in the Gaza Strip sent this message to the United States. Take a look. Jihadist leader to U.S. Islam is coming. And Sudanese cleric, uh, Muhammad said it is a duty to fight and target America. Oh, my. Iran's Revolutionary Guard committed to death to America. ISIS claims to have agents in place to attack American cities. Chicago and Las Vegas have been mentioned as targets. Now, that is by Cal Thomas, USA Today. And then, an evil that must be stopped. ISIS is the most serious threat to American interests in a decade. Why, we must counter it. Thank you, Joe Klein. Absolutely, we must counter. I agree with him 100%, don't you? And you know what? I just want to do something that I don't do enough, probably. I want to thank Jack. Thank you for warning America, Jack, and for warning the world now that we're in every country. We need to pay attention, open our eyes, pray. But not only that, we pray that those who are in the Senate and in Congress will back us up and say, let's counter terrorism. Oh, that's one of the last signs. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it in Noah's day? Genesis 6, 11. The whole world filled with violence, terrorism. And do you know that Khomeini came back to Iran in the 70s and said, we're going to take over the whole world. He's the one that started all the mess you see now. And then Khomeini, the present cleric, it heads up Iran, says, if we lose all of the Iranian people through an atomic war, it's worth it if we can take over the whole world and have one religion, Allah of the sword. Come on. Now, what does this all mean? Jesus is about to return. How do I know this? Jesus said in Luke 21, 9, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism, be not afraid that these things must first come before what? Just when it's about to happen, then shall he see the Son of Man, Jesus, come in the clouds with power and great glory. And when you begin to see these things, what these terroristic acts they're here, look up your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption of the body. When he says, come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and we sweep to the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 11 one hundredths of a second, 187 trillion billions of miles. Wow, I'm really steamed up right now, Rick Sella. But then he goes on to say in verse 31, there's more. When you see this terrorism going full blast, my kingdom is near. That's when he comes and sets up his kingdom of peace for a thousand years and then is recommissioned and sets it up for all eternity. Why? Because this world will never end. Thank the Lord. Ephesians 3.21. You know, Jack, something went through my mind in just a moment ago. It's something that Jesus said. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be what? Afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. If you have Jesus in your heart, you're ready for whatever the future holds, and you're ready for eternity. Have you opened your heart to the Lord? Maybe you're on drugs, alcohol, and you're really hooked on it. The Lord will deliver you if you'll only ask him to come into your life, be your savior. That word means so much, Savior. He'll save you, give you eternal life in heaven one day. Will you pray this prayer of salvation with Jack? Jack. Oh, Jesus, I love you so much. I love you, Jesus, more than my heart could ever express it. Now, I want you to pray this after me. If you feel you want this Jesus, do you want to meet him? Do you want to miss all this thing when he says, come up hither? You want to be ready for the rapture. Pray this, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. All have sinned, your book says, and I'm among them. And I'm sorry for my sin. I repent of it. I want to change my ways, but I can't do it, Jesus, alone. I need you. Come into my heart. Save me. Strengthen me. I want to be ready for the great evacuation. 
meeting you in heaven. So Jesus, I take you this day as my Savior. I pray it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Congratulations if you did. Write to me. There's my addresser. I would I absolutely love to send you this little book at First Steps in a New Direction. And now, our offer of the week. Oh, you need to have this. Here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Important that you get it. To order your copy of the DVD, When Death Was Defeated, for a donation of $24.95, or the Jack Van Impe Prophecy Bible with the DVD for a donation of $59.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. How important it is for you to understand and have this wonderful video. It's good equipment to fight evil, believe me. So make the order, call right away, or write to us. I want to leave you with this very good thought. What you hope to be like tomorrow depends on the choices you make today. We look forward to being here home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.